Wesley Inpool, my friend and my co-worker, <laughs> talk to me about Dawn of War 3, a game that you've seen in action ahead of E3, but I imagine this is going live uh, during the show itself. Yeah. Well, I've seen a fairly lengthy gameplay demo. Okay. Um, hands off, was is it? Hands off, yeah. yeah. A sort of scripted affair designed to give you a sort of sense of how the game works, essentially. And that's what we're seeing in the video now, this level you saw from yeah. start to finish. Yeah, um, so Dawn of War 3 is a kind of fusion of the first two Dawn of War games. So the first Dawn of War was sort of a very traditional RTS, mm -hmm. big armies, base building, yep. resource gathering. Dawn of War 2, they sort of changed approach and focused more on hero units, so you'd have fewer units on screen. Dawn of War 3 is kind of like both put together. So there's base buildings back, big armies are back, um, which is great. Uh, but they also have the sort of hero, hero units from the second game. And on top of that, they've now got new sort of super units, which are like these huge building size yeah. units like I think the Imperial we'll, Knight. We'll see some of that towards uh, the end of the video. I think the Imperial Knight shows up a little bit later on. But this, yeah. the hero unit that we're looking at right now, well, what's, it, what's his whole deal? So he's sort of Dawn of War, Space Marine favorite, mm -hmm. Gabriel Angelos. Uh, he's um, sort of commander level Space Marine. And he's very much a melee focused unit. Sure. He's really good at infantry, killing infantry. So the way the so Dawn of War has got a sort of um, an interesting new mechanic for these uh, elite units. Before each battle, you pick three. Okay. So there's a few to select from, and you pick three, and they each on the battlefield during a the match they each co cost a different number of elite points to deploy. Right. Um, so Angelos, for example, doesn't cost that many, so you can get him onto the battlefield quite quickly. Mm -hmm. And because he's good at, uh, he's quite mobile and he's good at enemy infantry, he's a really powerful early game unit sure. that you can use to harass your opponent or make ground early on. Um, but if you're more of a sort of turtle player, you might want to bring a elite unit that requires more elite points and would be better at other things that you would use end game. For example, the Imperial Knight, which is much better at destroying enemy armour. And then you can, but that, but you 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 can't really deploy until the end game when you've got enough elite points. Are elite points a new idea for the Dawn of War series? Or yeah. Is that, okay. So yeah. how do you earn them? Is that just, is it? That's just something just in, as, yeah, yeah, as you're playing the game. So there's a so. there's a bit of a risk involved in terms of yeah. how how early in the match you want if you're playing multiplayer, how early you want to. Yeah. Add is. So Relic hopes that this system will mean that you can tweak each army to your individual playstyle. So even if you've got like a Space Marine v Space Marine match. Sure. It can feel different because you've got a different set of three elite units. Okay. So in, in the gameplay we're seeing right now, this is obviously um, a campaign level. Um, is it an early one? Did you get any sense of where in the game this takes um, place? No, I didn't get a sense okay. of where it is. Right. Um, so the, this is, um, as you said, it's quite a scripted thing. We haven't actually got the base building here because he's, you're kind of fighting through an area yeah. and new units are turning up as yeah, you Yeah, Yeah, so it. what we're seeing is sort of standard Space Marine introduction sort of thing where you're controlling a few number of units, but um, things quickly escalate and we get a sense of the, how the scope of the battles in this game, which is much bigger than Dawn of War 2. And you can have a lot going on at once, True. right? You can have... Uh, loads of Space Marine units like scouts, snipers, standard sort of assault marine stuff. Yep. And then you can have your dreadnoughts, your vehicles, and you can have the elite units like Angelos and the super elites like... Yeah, you know, I, I wondered if things. that... Um, I wonder how overwhelming that will, that will feel because obviously with the elite units, with the heroes, you're, you've got abilities to think about. He's got the yep. leap, he's got his kind of spin, yeah. heavy attack. Yeah, big hammer. And... That's going. You're always going to have to be thinking about that every time they're up cooldown. You want to be making best use of those. Yeah. That's that's one concern. Then you've got your your troops at large, yeah. which you you know, of the bulk of your force. If you lose them, you're in a really bad spot, which you're worrying about. Then the dreadnoughts are acting slightly differently, and the, the massive unit, the Imperial Knights, yeah, seeing a whole other thing. That's a lot to yeah, think about so, in one, one moment. Yeah. So you might have noticed that Dawn of War Three has a different art style compared to the previous games, right. which were more striving for photorealism, particularly Dawn of War 2, which had a lot of detail. There's less detail in Dawn of War 3 on the individual units, and it's sort of more cartoony. Okay. Um, and I spoke to Relic about what they're going for with this, 
And one of the things they're trying to strive for is more clarity. Right. So things are sort of pop. Uh, there's a lot, of, bit more brightness to what's going on. I, I think you can. Say, it's safe to say that the. It looks a bit like the popular MOBAs, right? Which or, or like StarCraft Two has a lot of that yeah, as well. Which like is, the, the units are always very easy to identify. Yeah, yeah. Dawn of War previously, the units haven't always been very easy to identify on screen because everything is very gritty and yeah. grounded. Which and is they're, they're sticking with the the forty k like miniatures they want to try yeah. and represent. Yeah, yeah, as they are exactly. But it's a different look. It's okay. definitely a different look, and and part of it is to try and help people. Uh, sort of get a better, be able to pass what's going on okay. easier, because there is a like you say there can be a lot going on in Dawn of War. Do you think? So. Do you think that works? And do you think is that is that a trade off you're, you're yeah, happy to make? Well, at first I was a bit sort of worried about the art style because one of the things I love about Dawn of War One and Two is it really captures the 40k universe. Uh, in a way that most other games just have failed to. Mm-hmm. You know, like, 40k is a really depressing yeah. universe, right? It's like endless war. Mm-hmm. Worlds are basically rubble, yeah. and the only reason like entire races exist, it seems, is so that more people can fight and die. Uh, it's really sort of, it's a real slog, and the Dawn of 1 and 2 gave a real good sense of being sort of fighting in the dirt, essentially, like the the feeling that it, it, and it's very gory, very violent. The Warhammer 40k universe is full of like blood and limbs and like people getting chopped up and destroyed and stuff. And uh, I love that art style. I love the way they looked. So I was a, when I first saw it, I was a bit concerned. So the goriness is still there, but it's much sort of more colourful and bright, and things are clearer. Okay. But there's a lot. There's it's, there's more to it than that. They're also going for a, with the new art style. They're going for a better, a quick sort of responsiveness feel. So Dawn of War 2, uh, you could say Relic's RTS games in general, f- can sometimes feel a bit sluggish. Right. Like you'd give a unit a command and some, you know, eventually something would happen. You weren't always sure that yeah, they were responding to you very quickly. Like with StarCraft 2, you, you talk Everything about pops, you know, clips, right. clicks per minute. Exactly. That's yeah. not always a, uh, something you think about with no, that company here exactly, in Dawn of War. Exactly. And, they, and when you think about the popularity of MOBAs now, Everything is ultra responsive, like yeah. um, like hitting abilities, moving your units. Everything is really crystal clear. It's all about micro and and all about micro, and and things just feel fast. And so this new art style is in part about trying to get that kind of responsiveness in terms of like make, making units do stuff when you tell them to in Dawn of War Three, which I think when you when you think about the trade off they have, which is you know perhaps not going for this sort of gritty, uh, high detail, photorealistic look. Mm -hmm. Maybe the gameplay uh, benefits will make it all worthwhile. And to be fair, the the Dawn of War series has such a dedicated multiplayer following. I imagine gameplay going ahead of some of that visual style is probably what a a lot of people want to see. Well, I think that's that they're thinking ahead, right? They want this sort of game to last a long time. It's been a long time since Dawn of War 2 came yeah. out, and people are still playing it. And to their credit, Relic has updated that game with new stuff. And some of the expansions they released for Dawn of War 2 are wicked. I remember playing, I've played pretty much all of them. And um, their hope is for this, that it will last a long time. And that's not going to happen if the gameplay isn't modern. Mm-hmm. You know, if they just recreate Dawn of War... One and Dawn of War Two sort of put them together, and it just feels exactly the same. Then that probably won't cut it in a sort of age where, like, more people are playing League of Legends and Dota Two than all other PC games combined, sure. pretty much. Uh, so, like I said, I was a bit concerned about the art start first, but having spoken to the developers, I sort of get it. Sure. Do you do you think the the audience is is there and ready for Dawn of War? I know with um, so I, I follow. Starcraft 2 across its very long life cycle. Yeah. And by the time um, we, we came around to the, the third expansion, it did sort of feel like the that game had peaked. Yeah. And, that, and more than that, that the genre had yeah. peaked. Did they um, I, I talk put, about that I put, at all? I put the... F- so one of the things that I've been really interested in about Dawn of War 3 is whether they were tempted to basically ditch the RTS genre mm-hmm. and just make a MOBA. Sure. Because you, so many people... Like, MOBA is so hot right now. So many people are making MOBAs right now that you, you know, Relic needs to be successful. It needs to sell copies and have players, 
and part of me thought, God, they might actually go sort of a more MOBA route. But they said that, that Dawn of War was always going to be a straight up RTS. That that never, that, that was always, that was the first thing basically. And that they're hoping that it will be relevant through the strength of the IP, and I do believe it's a strong IP. And just the, the way that the game feels different because of you know, the responsiveness and having these big units. And so I guess that's that's the hope. Um, as you say, RTS is not what it was, but I don't. I think Relic can Relic can carve an audience sure. out for if itself. If there is, with this. if there is uh, another studio aside from Blizzard that can exactly. that, that deserves to and can lead this genre, yeah, it's, yeah. it's Relic. Right? They're really great at what they do. Company of Heroes is really good. Yep. Dawn of War games are really good. So they have pedigree. All, all, both series still maintain yeah. big multiplayer crowds as well. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be. T- I think it will be tough for for. Dawn of War 3 to you know, be a phenomenon but I think it can do well enough for it, the whole thing to be worthwhile which is, which is as a fan as someone who's been waiting for this game for a long time you know, that's, that's, that makes me happy Alright, so um, aside from, from this gameplay, when, when do you think we're next going to see more of Dawn of War 3? Um, obviously it's got a presence at E3 this week Big gameplay reveal at E3 which is the stuff we're seeing now Yeah. It's a PC game, so sure. Gamescom. <laughs> right. The ho- the home of PC games. The home of PC strategy games. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. So I'm pretty sure that we'll see a lot more of it in the run up to Gamescom and at Gamescom. They're not talking about mo- multiplayer right now, the standard sort of developer yep. response. But multiplayer will be a massive part of Dawn of War 3, right? So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a multiplayer available at Gamescom. Excellent. Well, we'll be there and have more on that then. Mm. Thanks for watching. Cheers.